Hello, in this video we're going to introduce the notion of something called a derivative. So one way to think about the derivative is that it is the slope of a function. Now we know that for straight lines, given by say y equals mx plus b, this is the slope intercept formula. In particular, we know the slope, which is m. And recall the slope is given by that familiar formula, rise over run. This is actually a very powerful formula if you think about it, because if you have something like y equals say 3x plus 11, you can just look at this line and you know the rate of change. You know it's three. So even though it's very simple mathematics, it is also very powerful. We would like to extend this idea to all functions, or at least most nice functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the following. We're going to draw a picture. And so here is our y-axis, and here is our x-axis. So this is x, and this is y. And then let's go ahead and draw a graph. I'm just going to do it uh, maybe something like this. And let's pick a point on the graph. I'm just going to pick this x value here. And so our goal will be to find the slope of this function here. I want to emphasize that the slope here is going to change. For example, if you were to try to find the rate of change here versus here, you notice it's different, right? Here you have a much steeper line, so the rate of change is bigger than it is here. So the rate of change is not constant like it is for straight lines. For straight lines, it never changes, so we can use a formula. But that doesn't quite work with functions here, so we're going to use some calculus. So just to be really concrete, the goal here is to find the slope at x. Okay, so let's go a little bit further away from x. Let's go maybe over, how about here? And I'll call this point x plus h. So basically, I could have called it anything, but this makes the computation um, a lot nicer. So that's why I used x plus h instead of like y or something like that. So this distance here is just going to be h. Now if this x value here uh, is x, <laughs> then the y value is simply f of x, kind of like if it was 2, here it would just be f of 2. And because this x value here is x plus h, this y value here is f of x plus h. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line that connects these two points. This line has a name, by the way. It's called the secant line. So this line you see here is called the secant line, S-E-C-A-N-T. And let's go ahead and find the slope of the secant line. We can do that by just finding a triangle, right? So it's rise over run. So here's the rise and here's the run. So I'm going to go ahead and write that here. So the slope of the secant line. So let's see if we can figure out what it is. So what is the rise? It's this distance here. So one way to think about that is it's this big distance here, which is f of x plus h, minus the small distance here, which is f of x. Right? The big distance minus the small distance gives you this distance here. So this distance here is simply f of x plus h minus f of x. That would be the rise, okay? Because remember, it's rise over run, rise over run. The run in this case would simply be h. And this is a very familiar formula. This is something that you might have seen like in an algebra class or like in a pre-calc class. So they call this the difference quotient. So it has a name. I'll, I'll write it here. It's called difference quotient. Okay, so how do we find the slope at x? So here's the 
the key idea. Here's the key defining moment uh, that puts all of it together. So we're going to use a limit. So I'm, I'm assuming you know what limits are. So that's the one prereq for this video. And so basically, as h approaches 0, what happens is this point here, x plus h, goes this way, right? It gets closer to x. And so what happens is this point here changes, right? It goes down this line. So what happens is as x, h approaches 0, this goes this way. And so on the y-axis, this point moves. And so you get a, a different secant line at every instant in time as this limit process is happening, you get different secant lines. So basically you have infinitely many secant lines that eventually, that eventually approach a line here that just touches. And this line is called the tangent line. So as h approaches 0, all of these secant lines approach this tangent line because you get secant line, secant line, secant line, secant line, secant line. And so basically the slopes of the secant lines approach the slope of the tangent line. So the slopes, because you have infinitely many secant lines, so the slopes of the secant lines, this is just one way to think about it. I think it's a very elegant way in my mind. Slopes of the secant lines approach the slope of the tangent line, of the tangent line. And let's write that. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of the slope of the secant line, which is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so this if, if this limit exists, right, because limits don't always exist, we know that. So if this limit exists, we're going to call it the derivative, and we're going to write it like this, f, and we're going to put a little symbol here, we'll say prime. So this is read f prime of x, so f prime of x, and we're going to say this is the slope of the function at x. More precisely, we say it's the slope of the tangent line at x. So this is the slope of tangent line at x. So this would be the slope of the tangent line at x. And we're going to say it's the derivative, so derivative of f at x. Okay, it's the derivative of f at x, or the slope of the tangent line at x, or more loosely, the slope of the function at x. Let's go ahead and do a really simple example um, just so you see how it works. And maybe the best example we can do um, is the following. So we have f of x equals uh, mx plus b. And let's go ahead and just do this example where we find the derivative of this function using the definition. So this is going to be our definition for the derivative. There's other definitions, and there's a lot more that can be said here. You can also think of this as the rate of change at a particular point, right? So it's the same thing as the slope at a point. It's all the same thing as the derivative. So this is called also, let me just go ahead and include this, instantaneous rate of change at x. So it really has three names instantaneous rate of change at x, the slope of the tangent line at x, and the derivative of f at x. So let's go ahead and do this example here. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, all being divided by h. So we're going to find the derivative of this function. Now we know the slope of this function is m, so the answer should be m because our new definition of slope should also agree with our old definition. So this is the limit as h approaches 0. So for f of x plus h, basically all you do is you replace all of the x's here with x plus h's. So this is m x plus h plus b. So just replacing x with x plus h, then minus f of x, so don't forget the parentheses, mx plus b. And this is all being divided by h. Let's keep going. This is the limit as h approaches 0 
Now we can distribute the m. So m times x is mx plus m times h is mh plus b. There's a minus 1 here, so this will be minus mx minus b. So minus mx minus b. This is all being divided by h. A bunch of stuff cancels here. Boom, 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 boom. We get the limit as h approaches 0 of mh over h. These cancels. This is the limit as h approaches 0 of m. And this is constant, right? Nothing is happening here, so you just get m, right? You plug in 0 for h, there's no h, and you get m. So this would be the derivative. So the derivative of this function at x, so f prime of x, is equal to m. And that agrees with, you know, our previous, um, you know, notion of slope. So I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.